what are the three things that uh, you think are necessary for a writer? Three things that are necessary for a writer? Only three? <laughs> How about the top three? The top three. Um, I think number one is talent, which I think, I, I use that advisedly because some people like to do this, you have it or you don't. I don't believe that. I think that you can get it. Um, so maybe scratch that, no talent. Okay, number one is persistence. You have to keep writing, and I think no matter how much talent you have innately, if you don't keep trying, if you don't keep improving your craft, you're either not going to be published or you're not going to last very long. You have to keep going and you have to keep writing. And when you don't do things right, you have to be willing to say, all right, I'm going to try it again, I'm going to make it right, I'm going to make it work. Uh, number two is I think you need a good support group. Um, it's very, very hard to write by yourself because you don't get any feedback whatsoever. And also, writing can be a soul-destroying business in that you send stuff out and you get like these one-line rejections saying, sorry, not for me. Um, that's it's difficult to work through on your own. And I think you need a support group of people telling you that you're, you're good enough and that you can do it. And that's a very important thing to have. If you don't have that, it's, I, I have so much respect for people who do it on their own because I can't imagine I can't imagine having kept myself going during those hard times. Um, and number three, you gotta have luck. Let's face it, it's hard to get published. It's hard to be in the right place at the right time. You can't, don't have any control over that. So, you know, you just have to try really hard to be lucky. Do you enjoy reading as much now that you're being published or is it um, more of a chore, or research? No, no. I always love reading. I, I don't stop. I, people have told me at various points in my life, you will be reading so much you, you won't like reading anymore. It has never happened. I love reading. I'm not going to stop. I don't want to. Do you have plans to write anything outside of the historical subgenre? You know, I have a lot of ideas. I don't think that I'm going to immediately start writing anything outside of the historical subgenre, mostly because in order to write contemporaries, you seem to need to know like movie star names and like brand names, and I'm pretty clueless. Like, I'm 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 sort of oblivious about most things that happen in the real world, and so it's very nice to have a world like several hundred years ago that I can go to, and I don't have to know like, you know that people wear shoes made by, watch me try and find a company. What is every, everyone always Manolo wears? Manolo Blahnik. Yeah, those, yeah. <laughs> or movie stars, people will mention movie star names and I'll be like, who is Ben Affleck? And that's really embarrassing. So I can't write contemporaries. Um, what is your favorite subgenre to read in romance? You know, I split my time, probably 50% historicals, 30% uh, paranormals, and then 30% other stuff where other stuff is like I really like sci-fi crossovers I don't get I can't find enough of those I, I, I mean it because there aren't that many that are being written I wish there were more like fantasy sci-fi crossovers uh, contemporaries pretty much anything like if, if someone tells me a book is good I will find it and read it um, that is the number one thing is people telling me good the book is good I will go and I want to read good books you were talking about a recent YA book that uh, you had enjoyed yes uh, in fact, it's not a romance. Um, it's called The Demon's Lexicon by Sarah Reese Brennan. I thought it was a fantastic book. And it wasn't, I say it's not a romance, but it has one of the most tender love stories between two brothers that I've ever read in a book. Um, it's just beautifully written. And it's shocking and it's surprising. And it just makes you tear up a little bit at the end. So I rec highly recommend that. What other books did, would you like give uh, to your friends to read? Well, I would certainly start with Tessa Dare's Goddess of the Hunt, um, which is also a book that came out in late 2009, or, or mid-2009, I suppose, um, and Surrender of a Siren and A Lady of Persuasion, uh, three books that came out right next to each other. And I think they are all fantastic examples of the romance genre and the historical romance genre. Um, if I were, especially if I were trying to convert someone to romance, I think there are very few people who, who you can go wrong, who will turn up their noses at uh, Loretta Chase, who I think is fabulous. Julia Quinn, who I think writes really sort of smart, fun books that are really easy for people to get into. Eloisa James, who I think really can bring a lot of people in. Um, that's a, just, a, we're talking historicals. I can go, do we, do we want to talk other genres? I sure. love Linnea Sinclair. If you're looking for science fiction crossovers, I think she has some really intelligent books with 
some great characters. Um, one of my favorite heroes of all time. She does one of my actually favorite constructs in a romance uh, is one where the hero sort of has to be, you know, pulled into the emotion, and he knows he has it, but you know, he he has to sort of like break through those barriers. And Linnea Sinclair, her her um, games of command has a hero who is actually. Um, He's a, I think he's a cyborg. I don't know if that's the term she used, but he's part machine, and he's not supposed to have emotions. But he wants to heroin so badly that he discovers love on his own. Oh, can you get any better than that? Oh, my little heart throbs at the thought. I love it.